Hey everyone, Tony from TN3 Studio. Today we are working with Vray Fur to create realistic grass. When you're thinking of adding realism, V-Ray Fur is one of the best plugins for generating grass, creating carpets and rugs, and simulating hair. Now the great thing about this plugin is that it only generates the strands during rendering time, making it one of the most efficient way to mimic these type of details into your work. In this video, I'll be focusing on the basic parameters along with a few procedural maps to get as close to some real life examples. Now before we get started, let's go over the modeling setup. The first thing you want to make sure is that your landscape is a group. This can be a flat surface or you can use the sandbox tool to add some bumps onto your surface. And this is really going to help with adding realism towards your final results. Secondly, you want to make sure that your front face is parallel to the camera because that is the face where V-Ray will generate the strands. And last, you will need a few V-Ray materials, one for your landscape base and at least one or two for the different types of grass you'll be creating. You can work with really basic materials from the built-in library for your trial and errors or you can create your own custom two-sided materials for your final results. So let's start by applying our landscape material and activating V-Ray Fur. To start off, you can see that the grass picks up the same material from your landscape. And there are some advantages to this, but for now, let's assign a separate material for our grass. Now that's looking a lot better. The default settings is a great place to start, but let's clear all the settings for now and let's create something from scratch. So to start off, we have two distribution settings. Per face distribution means that the strands are based on the value and not the size of the face. So this means that each face can have an equal amount of strands regardless of their size. Per area distribution on the other hand means that the strands per face are based on the size. So the smaller the face, the fewer strands and the larger the face, the more strands it will have. So we're going to come back to these settings in a few minutes. And as we adjust the next few parameters, keep in mind that they are measured in inches. As for our length, this is going to control the total height of our strands without gravity or bending influence. So we're going to keep our grass very short and we're going to set this to something like 3.5 inches. As for the thickness of our strands, we want our grass to be very thin. So we're going to set this at about an eighth of an inch. For our tapering, this is a very important parameter. This controls the thickness at the top of the strands. A value of zero here will keep the same thickness as the bottom and a value of one is going to give you a very thin top and giving you that needle effect. So let's set this to about 0.9. As for the gravity, this is the force pulling down on the strands. The lower this value, the stronger the pull. So let's set this to about negative 3.5. And the gravity also has a huge impact on the bending value, which controls the elasticity of the strands. So both of these parameters work really well together. So let's set our bending to about 0.2. We're going to skip the scale for now. As for the knots, this controls the number of vertical segments on the strands. The higher the number, the more segments and the higher the quality of the strands. So let's set this to something like 10. As for our grass blades, I think these are pretty good settings. So let's go back to our area distribution and change this value to 4.5. Now this is looking pretty good overall. So let's keep going through the varying settings. And there are no right or wrong for these parameters. It's more of a trial and error exercise until you come close to the details you want to achieve. And these settings can become optional if you decide to add variation through the mappings, which is something we'll do later in the video. Likewise for the curl settings, you can control the number of curls and their radius. But since this parameter has very little impact on the grass type we're creating, we're going to keep them at a minimum. 
Now this is looking pretty good. Maybe something you can use on your backyard where the grass is short and evenly trimmed. And I think you can do an even better job using these parameters and come up with some really unique results. Maybe something like a wild grass where the blades are longer and dry or something to help you portray a spring environment. Inveria also does a great job picking up colors from your diffuse map to create different shades within the blade so you get this really unique transitions between colors. Now better than these parameters are the details we can achieve using maps and this is where things get really interesting. Some of these parameters will react to values from monochrome textures while others will react from RGB values. So the white values in your texture will represent the value set for that parameter, while the black values in your texture will equal to zero, leaving the gray values to be the variances between the two. As for the RGBs, depending on the value you set for the parameter, the red values will offset along the horizontal, the greens will offset along the vertical, and the blues will offset along the surface normals. So let's get back to our example and try out the noise texture inside our length parameter to try and add variation to our grass height. Once you load the texture, you want to test some of these values and see how it affects the parameters. And you have a lot of flexibility from the texture placement settings that allow you to rotate scale and mirror the seamless textures inside V-Ray. Once you're done working with these parameters, try working with the RGB values for bend and initial direction maps. You'll find it quite interesting how the best results will come out of the most surprising combinations. And if at any point the interactive rendering is not responding to the parameter changes that you're making, you can either restart the interactive rendering or you can use the V-Ray UV tools to update the texture placements. Now after a few trial and errors, these are the final results for the examples I've shown earlier. As a final tip, you want to make sure not to get lost during this process from adding too many variables and using extreme values. But I've gotten pretty good results from adding slight variations and breaking the consistencies between each parameters to avoid repetitions. And when you're ready to work on a wider landscape, you want to work with your level of detail settings. By setting a starting distance, any first trends within will be true to the parameters you set. And anything further from that distance, V-Ray will decrease the level of details by increasing the thickness and decreasing the density of those trends. As always, you want to save these settings to your custom assets library so that they are ready to go for your next project. And thank you for watching if you've reached this point and hopefully you've learned something new from the content. Be sure to follow us on social media where our work show a lot of the final results from tips we share in our videos. Don't forget to like, comment down below what you'd like to see next, share and subscribe.